Hi, my name's Mark Evans, I'm a freelance cameraman, and this is my show reel. I've put this together to show my lighting, lit interviews, a bit of actuality, and there's a few pretty shots in there as well. I own all my own gear, I've got a high def camera, and I've got a digi as well. I do corporate, I do broadcast work, and my details are at the after this clip. I've also found out how hard it is to do a piece of camera. Cut. The years since have not been good. Now Rome stands strong. Rome stands tall and Rome stands... For us, Dance Umbrella was always the festival that we wanted to be in. London is a real crossroads for the world. I don't think anywhere, not even New York, sees as much, has as much traffic coming through. Dance from all countries, all continents, all types, all style. And there's a kind of really tangled up, twisted, knotted... I mean, you're basically the woman is tying herself in knots and trying to undo the knots, quite literally. It's a very angry work. I was very angry. I mean, I, and I still am pretty angry. There's like a punkness to it. Sky Arts travelled down to St Austell in Cornwall to visit the Eden Project and its new commissioned work entitled Seed. It marks an ongoing commitment by the Eden Project to unite art and design with ecological and environmental interests. We've been talking to Peter, as we had a number of artists, kind of in the early stages of the project, about possible collaboration. And Peter had come up with a number of ideas, in particular to do with how plants have inspired architectural form and design. It's interesting in a way about, about the patterns that we've been discussing is that, um, you know, people have always enjoyed things which have the golden proportion in them. Peter has lived and worked in Devon for the past 20 years. The majority of his work is honed and crafted in a rented barn at the back of his house. As locations go, it's pretty much perfect. Well, this is the main area where I work on larger scale things. This will be the very first time that I will debut as part of the festival. Um, I think it'll be the second or third time that I will sing at the Barbican. Danielle then finished her day off with a meeting at Deco Records in Chiswick to discuss her compilation album of Mozart pieces. I haven't really touched base with them in a while since the premiere of Popea. I've done, you know, um, I've been just busy with performances and resting and um, so it'll be good to sort of have a little update meeting with them. I'm so glad that we're, we're all in agreement really that Mozart is the way to go because um, well it's just such a natural step. It's what, it's what I started mm -hmm. with before I even went to Handel. Oh, it's, it's always the worst into, for me. Into 60 minutes. <sighs> it's exactly. not fair. As we did with the, with the Handel album, there was a great variety of mood. Mm. Yes, And I think yes. that's something we definitely want to achieve. I definitely do want to keep singing in Europe and America and not end up singing in only one city. Hi, I'm Doug Harris. I'm track curator here at Reading Speedway. I have been for the last 20 odd years. And today I'm going to show you how to prepare a Speedway track. My day starts nine o'clock on the morning. There's two of us in total that prepare the track. There's me and there's Eric. Eric is a character. I know him as Mr. Angry, because he's always angry. Here, he's known as uh, Uncle Albert. Preparing a speedway track is not like preparing a cricket pitch or a football pitch. It's very technical. Firstly, we blade the track. We put the blade on the tractor and take the shale from the outside to the inside, the shale is actually 90%. Therefore, it goes down very hard, so you need a blade to cut it. After I've done the blading, then I disconnect it and put the grader on, which is like a bedstead. Find any falafel huts or burger vans here. They do have locals dressed as 17th century musketeers, though. Well, this house has a very strong link to books and libraries, etc. And up until about the 1890s, it housed one of the great private libraries of Europe. It's since gone and been sold, but there were 57 original Caxton Bibles here, Shakespeare folios, etc. And it just seemed to me that if we were going to do something at a festival in the summer, we should base it around books, and a literary festival seemed the obvious way forward. I think there's something quite flattering in a way to be invited to stay in a magnificent place like this. It's so much beyond most of our experience that that's another thing that makes it special. 
you know, to stay at Althorpe. What, what could be better than that, maybe being invited to stay at Windsor Castle or Sandringham or something? Well, the setting of this festival is obviously what really makes it special. It's such a contrast to, to doing a bookshop in Bromley. Or... The, the actual talismanic, mysterious objects that, for the writer, somehow harness something unknown. I mean, I'm not into writers as, as an elite. I don't think they're especially sensitive or, um, or especially smart. They're just good with words. Premiered in 1980, Satyagraha is the second in Philip Glass's famous portrait trilogy of operas about men who have changed the world, the others being Einstein on the beach and Akhenaten. Hypnotically ritualistic in style, Satyagraha is a meditation on the spiritual leader Mahatma Gandhi's formative years in South Africa, when he developed his philosophy of non-violent protest as a powerful force for change. First encounters with uh, Gandhi and his life and his life's work would have been in India in 1970. The English National Opera and the Met in New York commissioned the visionary British theatre group Improbable to work on an adaptation of Glass's work in autumn 2006. No one is better than the English theatre. Uh, and it goes for the opera as well, and I've seen this happen with, uh, with English uh, singers and English performers. It's just, you know, interesting for an actor to play different parts. That's what's fun about being an actor, and you couldn't get more different than this. It's also a great character art to go for somebody who starts off cocky and assured, arrogant to mutilated and dead <laughs> and eaten by rats. He, he was in Lockstock, he was in Only Fools and Horses, he was in House Party. He's, done, he's been around for ages and he's always that the guy that makes you laugh. George was doing a little bit of, um, he had to de-block, he had to block, unblock a drain that was like, you know, fully loaded with bits and pieces and uh, he got covered in shit. And ain't that some shit? You know, that, that uh, they speak the same language that I do here. It's false, but it's... it's We're it's, not fooled by, by it. It's a different culture. Yeah. Can we have quiet, please? Quiet! Because there's a studio just over there in the other corner of the studio. They've got lovely red models and lovely aeroplanes and things all working there. So the director is running from one set to the other. The whole thing has a strange atmosphere. It's wonderfully original. When you see films like this, you, you can never really understand how they do it. Um, so I was really curious to come down to set and, and see what that was about. And you go in and you see these little robots, characters.